Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at proof. This is going to be the first of two videos and today I'm looking at disproof by counterexample, di uh, proof by exhaustion and direct proof in that order. So I'll look at a few examples of each. Um, I'll do the most examples of direct proof because that can be the hardest one. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper, pause the video as you need to and work through this yourself. I hope this is helpful. Please do get in touch. Uh, you can email me starfishmaths at gmail.com or leave a comment below. I do love to hear from you. If you're ready, let's get started. Okay, we're going to kick off today with disproof using a counterexample. So we have our first statement here, our first example. And what we want to do is show that this statement is not true. We want to disprove it. So this statement is claiming that for all prime numbers p, 2p plus 1 is also prime and um, all we need to do is find one example that will break it, one example that it doesn't work for. So we're looking for one example of one number, a prime number, such that 2p plus 1 is not prime. So do pause the video and try and have a go yourself, it might take you a little bit of time trying a few different numbers. And there are a few counterexamples that you could choose, but the first one that I found was 7. So P is 7, that is a prime number, but when we put it into 2P plus 1, that would be 15. 2 times 7 plus 1 is 15, and 15 is not a prime number, so it's not true, and we disproved it. Uh, this symbol here is uh, just a contradiction, but you could write a few words about that as well. Okay, second example of a disproof by counterexample. Um, this time we have a statement that says for all irrational x and y, x multiplied by y is also irrational. So you may have encountered the word irrational before, and I'll quickly explain what that means. Um, a rational number, a number that is rational, can be um, written in the form p over q. So all rational numbers can be written as a fraction, one number over another. So um, all whole numbers, eight, the whole number eight can be written as eight over one. So, so whole numbers are rational. Obviously, um, fractions are rational. Um, negative numbers are rational. But numbers that are irrational cannot be written in this form. And so some examples of irrational numbers are thirds um, and maybe pi as well. They can't be written as fractions. So that's going to give you a clue for finding your counterexample here. We're looking for two irrational numbers x and y and to disprove this, um, if we multiply them together to break this statement, we want to find that the um, product of those two irrational numbers is rational. So have a go, pause the video. Um, again, there are lots of different examples you could use here, but the one that I came up with was if x is root 2, y is root 8. Those are both irrational numbers, but when we multiply them together, we get root 16. And that obviously is 4, and that's not irrational, that's rational. So that breaks it, and that's our counterexample. So we've proved the statement is not true. Okay, so that was disproof by counterexample. Next we're going to look at proof by exhaustion. So this time we're going to prove the statement is correct and we're going to do it using proof by exhaustion. Now proof by exhaustion means you run through all the examples there are um, and just show that all of them work. So you can only use this when you can break all the cases down into a finite manageable number um, that you can look at. So I'm going to do a couple of examples of this. Um, here we've got a statement, no square number ends in 2. And I'll show you how you can break this down into a finite number of cases. What we'll do is look at all the square numbers from 1 to 10 and show that they don't end in 2. So do pause the video and have a play around and see what you can make of this yourself. Okay, so I've listed the first 10 square numbers there and found all the numbers that they end in and 2 isn't anywhere there. Um, and now this we can use as proof by exhaustion because if you think about it, 
any bigger number when we square it um, will always end in these numbers too. If you were to take, for example, um, 14 and square it, um, we don't know, I'm not going to work out what 14 squared is, but it would be a bunch of numbers um, and at the end it would be 4 squared which is 16, so it would end in a 6. So uh, whatever number you take to square it, it will end in the number, the last digit, what that ends in. And this is our list of all the single digits squared. So these are going to be the endings of all the numbers squared. So that is a proof by exhaustion that all square numbers will end in these numbers that I've highlighted in orange. Therefore, no square number ends in two. Okay, second example here. Um, and this proof, I'm actually gonna show you how to do it two different ways. I'm gonna show you first how to prove this by exhaustion. And then I'm also gonna show you how to prove it directly later. Um, so first of all, we're gonna look at proof by exhaustion. Uh, for all integers x, x squared plus x is even. Um, we're going to prove this is true and hopefully you've heard of the word integers before, it just means a whole number. So x has to be a whole number, no decimals or fractions. Um, the way to prove this by exhaustion is to break it into a finite number of cases that we can consider. So uh, the way to do that is if you're taking all integers, uh, you can break integers into even and odd integers. So and there are two cases to consider. Um, and the reason I wanted to uh, include this example is to show you how to make a number, an, an algebraic letter, how to let it be even or odd. And um, this is a trick you need to know. So if x is even, then we can, um, we can call it twice another number. So two lots of m or any letter you like. Um, where m is an integer as well. So for any even number you can express it as two lots of something else. Um, and if x is odd then what you can do is let it be two times m which is an even number and then just plus one because that will make it odd. So let's consider these two cases. If this is our x 2m I'm going to use this algebraic expression and work that out. So 2m all squared plus 2m, and that will give us 4m squared plus 2m. And then we can take 2 out as a factor. And because that's 2 times something else, then that is also even. I've run out of space, so I'll just go up here. And you can use these three dots that mean therefore. So you can put therefore even at the end. Maybe a little tick, because we've worked, we've, um, showing that case works for the statement. Um, and let's do the same thing for odd. You might want to pause the video and have a go at this yourself. So we're going to do x squared plus x using this here. So substituting that in. So remember this will be a double bracket expansion here. Um, I'm running out of space but please do work that out and collect the terms together. So collecting those I get that and again I can pull a factor of 2 out at the front here, factorise it. Again because that's 2 times something I can conclude that that is even. So we've done it, we've proved it by exhaustion, we've looked at all the even x's and all the odd x's, nothing else it could be. Both times we get that x squared plus x is even. Next up we've got direct proof, also known as proof by deduction or just algebraic proof um, and that's using algebra to prove a statement. And I'm going to keep this example the same as we did last time and um, uh, as I said I'm going to show you how to prove this using direct proof as well. Um, so another way of proving this one um, and that is to take the algebra, so take x squared plus x, we can factorise that into x times x plus 1. Now looking at that, um, whatever x is, we're multiplying it by itself but plus 1. So these are consecutive numbers. So that's the product of two consecutive numbers. And no matter what they are, one of them has to be even and one of them has to be odd. Just thinking about any two consecutive, that, that must always be the case. Um, so we can just write even times odd. Or, uh, if it's the other way around, odd times even. Both of those give an even number. 
whenever x is an integer. So using direct proof, just looking at the algebra, we've proved that statement to be true. Okay, let's look at another example of direct proof, um, algebraic proof. Um, and we're going to use some of the stuff, some of the tools we've already picked up in this video. So here the statement is, the sum of the squares of two consecutive integers is always odd. So I've shown you what odd numbers look like in algebra. It means it needs to be two times something and then plus one or minus one. Um, and I've also shown you consecutive integers. So do pause the video and have a go at this if you like. Otherwise, stay with me. So we're going to take two consecutive integers and we're doing the sum of the squares of them. So two consecutive integers, um, we can let one of them be x and the other one be x plus 1. Then we're squaring them and adding them together. So no matter what x is, if we show that this is odd, then we've proved the statement will always be true. So let's look at the algebra, expand out those brackets. You can take a factor of 2 out of those first two terms and then leave the plus 1 on the end. And remember, 2 times something plus 1 is always odd. So I'm going to put therefore odd. And that's it, proven. Okay, getting a little bit more complicated now, um, slightly harder examples to show you. Um, so for all real y, where y is in this form, uh, y is positive. We need to prove that it will always be positive, greater than zero. And here's another trick I wanted to show you. To prove that something is always positive, if you can get it into a form where it's the sum of squares, then you can deduce that it's positive, because square numbers have to be positive. Square numbers can't be negative. So we want to take this algebra and turn it into something that's the sum of squares. So what I'm going to do is complete this square. So I'm hoping you know how to complete this square. If not, check out my other video on that. We need to halve this number here, so it'll be half k. Then we take off that bit squared, which is a quarter k squared. And we've still got the plus k squared on the end there. You do need to practice your completing the square to be able to do this because this is using algebra, so it's a little bit trickier, but hopefully you follow that. Um, and then we can tidy up that ending. So minus a quarter plus one will be plus three quarters k squared. So by completing the square, we've um, written this expression as two square numbers added together. And because they're both squares, they have to be positive. So we've proved that y is always positive. Okay, we're going to finish with our last direct proof example. Um, again, a bit more complicated one. And we're proving that for all real x and y, x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to 2xy. The first thing I'm going to do is move that um, term over to this side because I find it easier to prove things are positive greater than zero. Um, like the last example, I'm going to do it by completing the square. So, um, <laughs> it's not an obvious one to complete the square. I'm just going to reorder that before I complete the square, um, because that's the middle term, essentially. So, when I halve that, I'll get minus y, and then minus y squared and plus y squared at the end. So those will cancel out. And that is true, so we have proved it. Now, the way I've written this um, isn't technically a very good way of writing a proof. I'll just show you why. Um, if you're trying to prove something directly, then you shouldn't really start with the statement itself, because we're trying to conclude that. So, But by using the algebra, what we found here is we can start with that. So to write the proof out properly, we can say that that's definitely true. Um, and then just go backwards, so therefore that's the same as that. Therefore we can prove what we're setting out to prove. 
So it's okay in a direct proof to um, play around yourself with the algebra to see how it works, but then um, write it out as a proof by starting with something you can you, you can definitely claim is true and then concluding what you're trying to conclude. Well I hope that was helpful and gave you some hints and tips and some different examples. Obviously do practice lots of different kinds of questions. Um, it's a difficult topic so good luck <laughs> and have fun. Thank you for watching.